Uh, his manager saying the brain scans taken after a second operation showed some small but still some positive change for him. Terry Schiavo's family is now joining the family of 13-year-old Jahai McMath in their battle to keep the girl on a ventilator. They're fighting to move Jahai, who has been declared brain dead, to a treatment facility where they are still hoping for a recovery. Terry Schiavo, you may recall, was the subject of a seven-year legal battle among her husband, lawmakers, and her parents over the removal of her feeding tube. Doctors said Schiavo was in a persistent vegetative state. Well, joining us now to weigh in on the latest on this, Dan Shore, former prosecutor and Dwayne Cates, a criminal defense attorney. Thank you so much for joining us. Morning. Under Morning. federal guidelines, whole brain death is considered death even if other parts of your body are still functioning. Jahai is on a ventilator. Six doctors have declared her dead. A judge declared her dead. The hospital consistently refers to her as the deceased body. Uh, Dan, is the key question here the legal definition of death? That's part of it, but there's two separate issues here. No one is denying the family's right to keep her on life support if they want to do so. However, they have to find a facility that's willing to do it. What the court did say is that this particular hospital, Children's Hospital in Oakland, isn't obligated to keep her on life support. So the family needs to find another facility. They're trying to, and the hospital is saying that there is no other facility that will take her. Yeah, and uh, there's a back and forth going on with that, and we'll get more into that in a moment. But Dwayne, the Shivo family, as we said, now involved. Terry Shivo died back in 2005. She was on a feeding tube for many years. Uh, her organization, Terry Shivo's organization, says hospital corporations have a vested financial interest in discontinuing life. Uh, do you agree with that, and do you believe this case is similar to Terry Shivo's? Well, first of all, the case isn't similar to Terry Schiavo's because Terry Schiavo was in a, a consistent vegetative state, meaning she could, her heart would beat, she could breathe uh, without assistance. The only thing that they, she had was a breathing tube. In this case, uh, th this child's brain dead, and, and if you remove the, uh, you can't breathe on her own, anything, if you disconnect her, she would, she would die almost immediately. So it is kind of a different, different case now. You know, the hospital is going to have a really hard time finding somebody that's going to that's take essentially a deceased person. And I can't even imagine the release form that some lawyers drawn up for the hospital right now before they're even going to let, you know, let somebody else take this child out of that hospital. I th I think yeah. it's, it's going to be pretty extensive. Uh, Dan Shore, you know, there are conflicting stories here. The family says they did find a facility on Long Island. Uh, we saw that facility named in some places. Uh, they say that this place will take Jahai, but the hospital is refusing to release her. But the hospital says in their own statement, the family has been unwilling or unable to provide a physician to perform the procedures necessary, transportation, or a facility that would accept a dead person on a ventilator. So. Uh, how difficult would it be to, to sort out at least which story is true here? There's been a lot of inconsistent information. Yeah. Last week, the family said they had a facility in the Bay Area in California that would take Jahai, and now they're saying that one in New York would take her. But the hospital is saying no, no, <clears throat> no facility has reached out to them. And it's really important that there's some coordination, obviously. Supposedly, a breathing tube and a feeding tube have to be put into Jahai so she could be moved. The question is who would perform that procedure, the hospital or another doctor coming into the hospital? And the hospital is saying we need specifics about how we're going to coordinate the family saying the hospital is not being cooperative. And the truth is probably somewhere in between. But if there is another facility willing to take Jahai and keep her on life support, it's hard to imagine they can't work out a way of moving her there. Uh, so, Dwayne, uh, back to the uh, hospital that has her now. Uh, they did not want to keep her on a feeding tube. They're keeping her on the ventilator. Uh, but her family says, well, it, does, it doesn't matter because she's being starved to death. Uh, what are the legal rights in terms of a feeding tube? Well, I mean, now we're, now we're somewhat back to the Terry Schiavo case. Now, you know, the judge, when the judge ruled, he ruled that they have to keep the ventilator going. He didn't rule that, he, that they had to keep the breathing tube in. And so at, at this point, it's simply the hospital simply following the, uh, the court's order in this case. And, and I would assume that they're, if they can't get her moved right away, that they're going to try to change those orders.
So, uh, Dan, uh, the court's order was that they don't have to keep her on a feeding tube. They didn't say that they can't. Uh, what, what recourse does the family have uh, since they still want her on the feeding tube? Well, they would have to appeal that to another court. And the, the order was similar to the life support order where they said the hospital is not under any obligation to keep life support past January 7th. They didn't say the hospital couldn't. And the same thing with the feeding tube. But the hospital is saying that this is, in their view, a dead person. And they're not going to pr provide a feeding tube or life support beyond the date that they have to, according to court order. So the family would have to appeal, or they'd have to get another facility that can take Shahai before, um, before the need for a feeding tube becomes so imminent that she dies. Right. Uh, Dwayne, very briefly, last question. Uh, what are the implications here for fe people who are filling out a living will? Well, a living will could solve this. If, if she had a living will that says, that said basically that if I get, if I end up in a state like this, I don't want my, I don't want my life prolonged, or I do want my life prolonged, that could help a great deal. And and most people, when by the time they hit the hospital, don't have a living will, especially somebody as young as this. Yeah. And so uh, it, it can solve a lot of problems. Yeah. All right, Dwayne Cates and Dan Shore. Thank you both so much for joining us. Thank you. Right about 12 minutes before the hour, Jenna Lee's coming up in a matter of moments. Happening now. Is this your first show of 2014? <laughs> it is, Bill. Make it special. How is it going so far? Outstanding. <laughs> okay, good. Ten <laughs> okay.